Hello everyone and welcome to the 2016 Pure Michigan 400 and Michigan Air National Speedway Race Review where I recap what went on before the race, during the race, and after the race looking ahead to the upcoming race. So, overall thoughts on this race? I like the race. I'm going to give it a fine race. Um, certainly not as good as I hoped for, um, but, but certainly better than last year's high drag package experiment, which uh, w which failed miserably, and, and, and a lot of us ha had to sit through that bore fest. Um, one thing I liked about this race was how um, different drivers took different took turns dominating the race. Um, you didn't exactly know who, who was going to win uh, throughout the race. I mean, Joe Logano won the pole and led, and led the opening like 24 laps. It looked like that he was going to dominate the race and win it just like he did in June. But, but then Kevin Harvick took the lead. He dominated. It looked like that. It looked like that he might go back, back, back to back. Um, excuse me, because he won at Bristol. Uh, and then March Jr. left a little bit. It looked like he had a winning car. Then had a bad pit stop, which caused damage to his to his car. He was never able to recover. Jimmy Johnson led several laps uh, and looked like a contender for the win for the first time in a couple months. Uh, and then in the second half of the race, the Young Guns stole the show. Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson, both each leading a ton of laps, and and, and, when, I, and when a caution came out late in the race, it set up a restart with nine laps to go. Chase Elliott picked the outside, which forced Kyle Larson to the inside, and when the green flag waved, both drivers spun their tires, but Kyle Larson got a push from Brad Keselowski, and that propelled him to the lead, and, 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 and using the clean air to his advantage, Kyle Larson finally won his first career Spring Cup Series race. And, and I gotta say, I was just I was just really happy and excited. I screamed and yelled when he took the, the, the checkered flag in first place. And, and, and I rarely do that. Um, and, and now Kyle Larson's in, in, in the chase after looking like um, he, he was going to barely miss it. Um, and... Um, overall, I think what, one, of, one of the most popular wins this season, this this month as a whole actually for NASCAR has actually been a good month for, for first time winners. If you look at the Spring Cup Xfinity Truck Series, uh, Chris Fisher won Pocono uh, in the Xfinity race at Mid-Ohio, Justin Marks won, won. Uh, Ben Kennedy won, won his first NASCAR race in, in the Bristol Truck Race. Uh, and then this weekend, Brett Moffat won the track race in Michigan. Michael McDowell won his first NASCAR race uh, uh, period uh, at Road America, and, and today Kyle Larson. Uh, and that and that reason alone alone makes this weekend one of my favorite NASCAR weekends I've ever seen. About a month ago, NASCAR announced that they would bring back the even lower downforce package, and as, as I like to call it, to this race. They already tested it in, in the first Michigan race of June and at Kentucky last July, and NASCAR decided to run it again. Um, and this will likely be the 2017 Aero package that NASCAR will, will probably announce sometime within the next couple weeks. Uh, how did it do this time compared to previous times? Well, um, it didn't really make much, much of a difference because the race itself, it, it just wasn't really much race, you know, there weren't, there wasn't a lot of passing going on, especially for the lead, uh, I, mean, I mean, obviously, there were less cautions, uh, so less restarts, but, and obviously, clean air is still important, I don't really think it's really, I'll say the same thing that I said back in June, I don't really think it's really a package problem, Michigan itself still has a fresh new surface, and plus, the racing group has not widened out, and I'll actually show you uh, pictures of that in a moment. Uh, but, I, but I think it's like those two things, fresh surface, uh, limited racing groove that, that I think is keeping us away from seeing the full potential of this package. And, we, and the same issue happened at Kentucky, which that track uh, also re recently got repaid. I mean, I said it back in June, uh, and I still wish that this package could, could have been used at Darlington because I, I think it deserved a chance at, at a track with an older, with an older racing surface, but that's not going to happen. Uh, obviously now. So that's really what, what I have to say about, about this package. This is what I mean by limited racing group. 
This right here in front of you is a snapshot that I took um, of the 2012 Pure Michigan 400. In 2012, the reason why it's that year is because this was the first year uh, of NASCAR racing on the current Michigan surface. Um, and, and as you can see, uh, the racing group only consisted of about half the racetrack. And, and to me, at this point, the racing group was kind of, was was strangely in the middle and not exactly on the bottom like, like we usually see at our group caves. But right here, this I, I took this snapshot and this is the closing laps of, of this race. And as you can see, not, not much ha ha has really changed. Uh, now uh, the bottom is a little bit more racier, but as you can see, there's still a lot of gray area up, up on top that drivers are, are not using just because there's not really any grip up there. Now that'll probably change in five to eight years from now, unfortunately. Um, and so this is, and so that, that's what I mean by uh, lack of of a racing groove. You know, it's very limited. Now, Mich now if Michigan got or, or paved with progressive banking, we, we probably would not be having this um, discussion. I just want to point that out there because look at Kansas. Um, it, it already had an upper groove um, like less than three years after it got repaid. Over the past month or two, there's been a lot of talk towards Hendra Motorsports on, on what's going on with them. Why are they str struggling? Uh, and the stats also prove, you know, this team overall has led a lot less laps than they have in previous years. Uh, and uh, they've even gotten a couple consecutive races uh, without any driver scoring a top 10 or, 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 or just simply leading a lap. Uh, but, but in this race, I felt like they're not just like Hendrick, but Chevy overall made strides. Um, you know, all four Hendrick cars made the final round qualifying, and all four Hendrick cars uh, uh, early in the race were running into, running into the top 10 of the team. Uh, the only Hendrick car that had a bad day was Alex Bowman, who was, who was subbing in for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jeff Gore was not in that car because he had a prior commitment. Um, and Alex Bowman, he, he could have come away with a top 10, uh, which would have been a career rest for him. For him but, uh, but, just like he had, but just like he had allowed it, he had problems, problems with the engine and unfortunately got a poor finish. So that sucked for him. But, but other than that, Hendrick Motorsports had a, had a really good day. At one point, um, three other four cars were in the top five. Johnson and Chase Elliott led a lot of laps. Casey Kane had, had had one of his stronger runs, uh, had one of his best runs of the season, um, and even though they didn't win, they made big gains today, especially especially over the uh, Toyos and, and Fords. But, but maybe not, maybe I shouldn't just say just Hendrick, but Chevy overall, um, be, be, because because Chip Ganassi Racing obviously with Kyle Larson winning, but but also uh, Jamie McMurray got a top 10 finish. I, I, I just think that Hendrick slash, slash Chevy was able to adapt to this different package pretty well. And since this will likely be the 2017 rules package, may, maybe next year uh, it is going to be a, a Hendrick slash Chevrolet year. Coming into the summer months, June, July, and August, the, the chase pitcher looked pretty much how you would expect, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of, like, surprise winners, the drivers they expected to be into the chase and, and, and have uh, a win to lock themselves in, they, they were the drivers that, that they would have expected to, uh, but, but since then, uh, starting with Tony Stewart, Wayne Antonella, uh, and then this month alone, Chris Buescher, Wayne Pocono, and Kyle Larson, on the outside looking in, gain, gain the win in this race, uh, the chase pitcher has changed uh, significantly. Uh, and, and what does it look like now? Well, we now have at least 13 drivers uh, in the chase right now. Uh, 12 of them are locked in. The only one that's not officially locked in is Chris Buescher, who was just barely into the top three points and did not have a very good day, good day today. In fact, it was actually a pretty poor day. Uh, engine issues pretty much from the start of the race resulted in a uh, it resulted in a 35th place finish. Uh, and lost, and he, he did lose some points. So if Chris Buescher has an, has another bad race at Darlington or Richmond or, or, or both, uh, then Chris Buescher will likely fall outside the, the top three points. Uh, but right, but right now the way it looks, uh, we we've got a pretty close back. We got a close battle, or I guess it depends on, on your definition of close. Um, a close battle for uh, uh, the drivers trying to stay inside the chase. Uh, chase Elliott has a twenty-four point. 
you don't see it here, but Chase Elliott has a 27 point advantage over the cutoff. Um, Austin Dillon, it's 19 points. McMurray, it's like 15 points or, or something like that. Ryan Newman is the first driver looking in uh, after uh, after Kyle Larson went, went today. Uh, but if Chris Fisher falls out, but if Chris Fisher falls outside the top 20 points, then Ryan Newman will be back inside um, the chase grid again. Um, and it's 15 points that separates between McMurray and Newman. So, uh, so 15 points is not is not a lot of points uh, depending on how you look at it. So. Uh, so this could definitely uh, change a lot, especially since you know we're, we're heading to the track two, two tracks of Tam and Darlington next week, and then we got short track racing and at short tracks. You know, a lot can happen there. So um, the chase grid is still not very clear. Um, I, ho I hope you didn't. I hope you didn't uh, write it, write your predictions with, with, with a pen uh, and with a pencil instead, because you might need to do some more racing uh, after these next two weeks. Another thing to keep our eye out on for, uh, burnouts, or just simply post-race celebrations. Uh, after Watkins Glen, um, NASCAR uh, hinted that there might be changes to uh, the white post-race to what can be done during a post-race celebration because, of course, one thing that uh, one thing that has happened for, it's, it's really happened for a long time, but I guess has just become more evident in recent years, is drivers uh, ending up destroying uh, their their cars or damaging their cars when they do like things like burnouts, for example. I mean, look at like look at one day him and one at Watkins Glen. You, you know, he did a super long burnout and then blowing out the rear the his rear tires and destroying the back end of his car. Kyle Larson, uh, it wasn't it wasn't to that extreme, uh, but, he, but, he, but, he, but he did uh, destroy that car. Plus, he also uh, he didn't exactly jump on the roof, but he hopped onto it and stood on it for a while, which, uh, which, I, which I know NASCAR has has advised the drivers sometimes not to do that. But I think in the case of Kyle Larson, it was just in, in the moment, excited, uh, for first win. Um, so this is like one thing I, I think we need to keep our eye out for is uh, possible rules on this. Um, I'm kind of torn on possible restrictions on post race celebrations. Um, but, but, but at the same time, I think that these drivers can probably, I mean, these drivers don't know, no, a lot of these drivers know how, how to do burnouts about destroying their cars, and plus sometimes these drivers and teams sometimes, uh, do, do suspicious stuff, so that way they can just sort of, like, cheat the, cheat the post-race inspection system, I mean, that has happened before, uh, look at Jimmy Johnson, Chad Canals, Talladega Fall Race of 2011, so, Overall, I'm just kind of torn on this. So that's pretty much all the main topics that I want to get out on this race review. So now let's just wrap things up. Michigan, uh, a fine race. I wish it was better, but I'll take it. I enjoyed the fact that we have our first time winner this season. Uh, I also got to say, pretty clean race. You know, only four cautions making it uh, the fastest. The, I think this was the fastest. Fast, Fastest Michigan race in several years. My guess, I just can't talk today. Um, you know, and and all the and all the cautions were either for like debris. Uh, we, we have the Kyle Busch caution early or spin with Kyle Busch, Michael Nett, uh hat tie go down late in the race. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty clean Michigan race, but I'll take it. Um, I was expecting more cautions though, especially since you know the cars are much harder to drive when we saw so many out out of control cars back in June. Um, but now. But now we head to Darlington for the Southern 500, and and I have been waiting for this race a long time. But, but really, um, this week or to, or today, it, it really hit me that I am truly excited for, for this race. We have for like paint schemes that, uh, and, and I think they're and I think a lot of them are even better than the one we had last year. Uh, Darlington, the race at Darlington ha has become great again now that the service ha has gone all abrasive. Um, we, we saw some great race mo modes la last year in this race, and also it's back on, on Liberty Day again, and hopefully it stays there for years to come. Um, and, and really, I really feel like that this, at this upcoming weekend, it, uh, just like last year, it's gonna be it's gonna be like one big awesome party that they're not. Going, going to want to miss. Uh, last year's race w w w was mostly a night race, but this year the race starts about an hour earlier, uh, so it's going to be this sort of 
day to night uh, uh, race, uh, k- kind of, and, and so it'll be interesting to see if that affects the race of any kind. The race one year ago ha- had a record of 18 cautions, but, but, but I don't see that happen again, especially since now uh, pretty much all the drivers ha- have gotten used to uh, l- less downforce. Um, but but I guess it wouldn't surprise me to see that many cautions again. Ho- ho- hopefully not. Uh, ho- hopefully we can get some racing because I really want to see like longer your like runs it and see how that uh ch- changes the racing strategy um and also uh jeff gordon is back in the car deal hundred will not be will not be in the ADA car uh again so jeff gordon will be in the car so who knows next sunday could be jeff gordon's last race you never know uh as far as who's the favorite who at Arlington, I really, I really do not know. I mean, Carl Edwards won this race a year ago, but Darlington is such a, such a unique, it's such, such a challenging track that, um, and plus, and plus, we only go to Darlington once a year, so um, there's not really much of a notebook to look back on, and and, and say that this driver or that driver is going to run well. I really, I really do not know. Uh, it probably will, it probably. Will be a race though between Gibbs and Penske because that's just kind of been the o- overall vibe of this year. But who knows? Who knows? And maybe we'll have another surprise winner. That's possible. But that is pretty much it for this race review. I hope you enjoyed it. Next week because the race is a Sunday night race, and I, and I know I have school the next day uh, after that. So the race review will once again be in a shorter condensed version. Uh, but I am glad I was able to do this in the format that I like doing it, doing just because it's more creative and, you know, I, I like devoting extra time to, to specific topics. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to rate, comment, subscribe, and bye.